Hello, and welcome to our channel. Many people have a habit of procrastinating until the last minute. There is no greater drive for these people than a looming deadline to get things done. Whether it's because of overconfidence or self-doubt, they are the ones who delay things. There is no doubt that persistently waiting can have unfavorable effects. But how can you stop putting things off and start completing them? Making that huge concept a reality can be especially difficult for entrepreneurs who procrastinate. Learn how to avoid procrastination, maintain focus, and make progress far in advance of your deadlines in the sections that follow. What leads one to put off tasks? Unlike what many people think, procrastination is not a sign of laziness. Why do we do it? Then, one explanation holds that even while we know delaying action is bad for us, we nonetheless do it anyway because we can't control our negative emotions. According to one study, it is connected to people's desire for immediate pleasure. It becomes more important to avoid uncomfortable feelings than to do the task at hand. Several explanations for this widespread phenomena have been proposed. The concept of procrastinator archetypes describes the variety of reasons why people delay taking action. The five categories of delayers. Although there isn't one set of procrastinator archetypes that is universally acknowledged, Academics and psychologists have utilized this framework to describe the reasons why people procrastinate. Nonetheless, a few archetypes appear repeatedly despite having different names. The pleasure seeker, sometimes referred to as a thrill seeker or a novelty seeker, most closely resembles the hypothesis presented above. This personality type consciously chooses to perform something enjoyable above a necessary duty. This kind of person will occasionally put off doing something so they can enjoy the rush of finishing it right before the deadline. The dreamer, sometimes referred to as the optimist, is an arrogant type. People frequently think that things will just happen on their own without their help and are unaware of the negative effects of procrastination. The overbooker, often referred to as the overdue or the busy bee, utilizes being busy as a justification for putting things off. This kind deliberately overbooks to appear productive while putting off activities that are vital or immediate. The performer, who stresses perfection over completion, is another name for the perfectionist. They frequently put off starting a project or assignment out of concern that they won't have enough time to finish it to their high standards. The avoider, often referred to as the worrier or the self-deprecator, procrastinates out of fear of failure or rejection. This personality wants to avoid suffering and avoids duties out of worry and fear. How can we be impacted by procrastination? Around us, procrastination might irritate people. It can be detrimental to your relationships with co-workers, friends, and other people in your life when expectations aren't met when tasks that have an impact on others' work are routinely put back. Building a network and developing good relationships with clients, suppliers, and other partners are essential throughout the crucial early stages of business. The consequences of a procrastinating tendency might be detrimental to your company. Think about how procrastinating will influence your future self as well. Procrastinators experienced lower levels of stress in the first half of the year, according to a study that followed a group of college students over the course of a school year. At the end of the year, the stress levels of this group, however, had surpassed those of the non-procrastinators. How to quit putting things off? Admit your toddiness. According to Damon Zahari ads in The Procrastination Cure, there is no one-size-fits-all method for dealing with a sensation of overload. Finding the source of the feeling and dealing with it there is the most efficient way to regulate it. The first step to breaking the habit of procrastination is admitting that it is a problem for you. When you attempted to reschedule a task, Pay attention to your emotions and inner dialogue. Understanding the causes of procrastination is the first step in learning how to stop it. Review your objectives. The decision to put off doing something can result from a disconnect with the reward or value of doing it. You can start to lessen procrastination by engaging in meaningful goal setting, whether it's creating new ones or revisiting long-term ones. By doing this, you should also be able to break down a big goal into smaller, more manageable chores, bring potential outcomes into the present. According to author and habits expert James Clear, distant punishments and rewards are poor at encouraging a procrastinator in the here and now. He illustrates the procrastination action line in the chart below by showing how the moment of action is when the discomfort related to the activity starts to lessen. If you understand that just beginning a task will reduce fear, discomfort, or worry, 
it is simpler to force yourself to complete it. James claims that motivation then comes from the momentum of beginning. Establish fake deadlines. The thrill seeker will benefit most from this tactic. When faced with near deadline circumstances, this type thrives since it forces them to work quickly because they have no other option. Setting due dates ahead of time may assist lower stress in the closing days of a project or work. Yet this is not a sustainable strategy to eliminate procrastination nor cure you of the habit. It enables the thrill seeker to feel the strain of a deadline without having to worry about the potential repercussions of hurried labor at the last minute. Use apps and tools. Calendars are frequently neglected by procrastinators. While to-do lists enable hurried prioritization, apps and tools made for focus and scheduling may be able to keep chronic procrastinators on track. The Pomodoro Method which focuses on arranging focused work in little intervals, may be able to assist you in stopping your procrastination. To try this strategy for yourself, perform a search online for a Pomodoro timer. There are a number of well-regarded desktop, mobile, and tablet applications. If pen and paper aren't working, a to-do app is a fantastic alternative. With features like task prioritization, task categories, labelling, and notifications, an app may give your to-do lists a boost. Try TickTick, Tadoist, or Google Tasks. Split up large jobs into manageable units, especially for the perfectionist or the avoider. Procrastination may set in since the activity seems like a huge undertaking. In this situation, re-evaluating your to-do list may be all that is required to overcome procrastination. Avoid setting up broad end goals and instead divide each one into smaller, more manageable activities that will help you gain momentum. Teams frequently use this idea when they operate in sprints in the workplace a set of tasks worked on within a defined time frame. As an illustration, perhaps your to-do list should be divided out into activities like perform market research which might then be further divided into run a focus group and run a competition analysis and brainstorm brand values rather than just listing right business plan. Choose useful strategies to put off doing something in your own life. Procrastination can be practiced while yet being productive. Structured procrastination, as it was coined by Stanford professor John Perry, is the practice of delaying tasks in favor of focusing on something else that demands your attention. According to co-founder of I Donate His Walter Chen, the beauty of the structured procrastination strategy is that it understands the extreme difficulties in shifting the pro-tomorrow vein and runs with it instead of against it. Choose a diversion that nevertheless advances your overall objective. In other words, checking is a useless activity. It may be a verb, but it doesn't really do anything. When I first started blogging, I would frequently check my statistics without a good cause, says Darius Four Ruse in Do It Today. For instance, if you're putting off creating your e-commerce business, Practice self-control and direct that scroll towards something connected to the task at hand rather than mindlessly perusing social media. To find visual inspiration for the theme or style of your store, browse Pinterest, Behance, or the websites of your competitors. Get focused. Have you ever heard a runner describe the sensation of finding the ideal stride? where the run ceases to feel like a chore and instead flows smoothly. The same can be done to stop procrastinating while finishing challenging jobs. For procrastinators, getting started is frequently the most difficult step. But if the techniques on this list can help you get past the biggest obstacle, the rest will be simple. Many people discover that altering their environment or listening to particular music or white noise can help them get in the zone. Having the correct playlist could be all you need to figure out how to stop procrastinating. Develop a ship it attitude. For the perfectionist, this one. This group finds it difficult to accept the adage own is better than perfect. But perfection might stand in the way of advancement. Have a routine for launching your project's Vault 1 or MVP minimum viable product. Such as a soft launch of your new website design. What condition does something absolutely need to be in? What can you ship in a short amount of time? Later, any kinks can always be worked out. A live version of an online store, for instance, is a useful approach to find out what needs to be improved as users interact with it. Produce momentum. The hardest part of doing a task you find boring, challenging, or distasteful is starting it, according to Damon Zahari ads. But once you start, a curious thing occurs. The fear and dread related to it quickly fade away. 
Prioritize your to-do list and put fast wins at the top. If you can develop the practice of starting out but finishing less difficult activities first, this moves you forwards, reduces self-doubt, and gives you an infectious sense of accomplishment. Take this wave to the most terrifying missions. Establish responsibility. Beginning business owners frequently work alone, juggling multiple responsibilities, and reporting to no one save a select group of early clients. For those used to a 9-to-5 job where deadlines were set by a lead or where you were answerable to a big team, this might be a shift. Find ways to be accountable outside the employer-employee model if it isn't already there. Choose a productivity partner through networking. Communicate your objectives and due dates with them, and keep them informed of your progress. You can accomplish this by considering yourself to be your own client. Record your progress in a journal. You may be inspired to have something to say every day if you put tasks in writing or speak them aloud. Eliminate procrastination now rather than later. Those who procrastinate frequently excel at working under pressure and finishing a large assignment quickly. Yet, the drawback is that both relationships and job may suffer. Your mental health may be impacted by the tension of facing unfinished work as well as the adrenaline rush that comes with meeting strict deadlines. Whilst it may seem harmless to continually project intentions into the not too distant future, think about your future self. Take some time right now to assess the benefit of completing the task at hand before pushing it off to tomorrow. Thank you for watching and remember to let us know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe.